Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. This is our episode two. Oh, man, episode one was a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're trying to fix the audio. <laughs> it's a bit echoey, so we got to deal with that. But um, for today, we're actually speaking about prayer. So this is our second episode. We're talking about prayer. Yep. And that is obviously tying to devotion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so um, one thing that we actually touched on mm-hmm. last week was that prayer is a way of communicating to God, right? It's, yes. It's a time where you you spend in God's presence and you pray, right? Whether it could be a moment of request, right? You're asking for something. Yep. It's a moment of repentance, right? You're repenting, you're confessing your sins. It could um, mean a lot of things, right? So I I think this is this is an important part of of our day to day life is where you get to spend time to speak to God. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, uh, it definitely is, and um, that that's what it is. It's a communication between you and your Maker, your your Creator, um, the Almighty God. And I think uh, we have to treat it as such. We have to treat it like it's us talking to our God, our King. And you have to come when you pray with that submissive attitude. Yeah, humility. Humility, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not a it's not like um, an attitude of um, pride. You, you have to come humble because we're coming before the King, um, before the King of Kings, and just imagine that, and uh, you know him standing, so sitting in his throne and surrounded by seraphim. Yeah, all these angels. All these angels, you know, singing holy, holy. And that that does give you a perspective when it comes to praying. Because sometimes, like, you you treat God like this this family member. Yeah. That, like, you force yourself to go and see. Yes. You're like, oh, man, I've got to pray or I've forgotten (laughs) to pray and so on. And in having that attitude, you kind of miss the idea of what a privilege it is to come before the maker of heaven and earth to be able to have an opportunity to speak to him and not only to speak but also him listening to you yeah right absolutely i mean we live in the age of internet right yes and um you know you could go on the internet and you could go to someone's profile and you could send a text message, right? And that person could be a very important person. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that person needs to pay attention to you, right? Yeah. Or or give you some time of his day. But with God, it's different. We we have this confidence. And and this is something from the Bible, like what yes. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 7. He's saying, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So in Jesus saying that, it's it's a promise to us. Like every time we are asking, we know that God is listening. Yes. And not only God is listening, Jesus is also kind of assuring us that God also is answering. Yes. Right? So I think that's important. Yeah, and I think we should make a distinction between answering and saying yes are two different things. <laughs> um, the answer sometimes is no, sometimes is not now, sometimes... It's mostly not now. It's it's um, but of course there are some cases where the answer is yes. Um, but the most important thing is it's it's we shouldn't treat prayer like it's um, how do you say it's something that you get like a spare wheel because you know you it's always there in case you need it in case your current um, current you know, plan current plan working. is not working yeah. We shouldn't be treating prayer as such. It should be a daily devotion. It should be a daily thing that we we do uh, as a Christian. Uh, it should be um, a communication between us and our King, and um, it help it edifies us it crazy amount. Oh, yeah. It it helps us. Uh, I mean, uh, on, honestly, there are some times where I recall where I was in life, and without prayer, I don't know if I'd be here. I'll be honest. Yeah. Uh, and I mean that quite literally. I don't think I would be here. Um, so it, I think prayer is a very, 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 very um, underappreciated part of a Christian life. And I think we're all guilty of that. Sometimes we put our own 
circumstances, our own needs, our own desires ahead of what is what is right, and that is prayer. And of course, reading our word, uh, the word of God. Sorry. Um, also, in saying that, um, and and I've 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 had this experience in my life as well. Yeah. I've been a Christian for what 17, 18 years now. So you know, you go through a lot of stuff. Sometimes you feel like. I know I should pray for this situation, yeah. but I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Because I feel like I've got things under control. You know? Yes. And God will take you through a big detour, like he did with the, with the Israelites yeah. in the desert, just to show you that not everything can be done by your own strength. Not everything is under your control. Yeah. Sometimes as human beings... We, we fall for that illusion mm -hmm. where we think that we control our lives, hmm. you know? And I think that's, that's a scary thing to think, especially for a Christian. Mm -hmm. Because as a Christian, we need to rely on God, not to rely on ourselves. And I'm not saying it in the sense of act like a baby, get spoon-fed and so on, yeah. but in the sense of coming and saying, there are things in my life that I really need God to be involved with. Absolutely. And I've had some friends, and I really love it. It actually encouraged me and it changed my 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 way of seeing prayer. Yeah. Is they pray for the smaller things. Yeah. They're like, it's not only just for God's protection, God's provision and so on, but I just want to communicate everything to God. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I saw that and I'm like, that's a that's an amazing prayer life because it takes away that perspective of prayer life is this kind of request envelope. God, these are my three things. And then you just hand it to God. Could you could you grant me my wishes? Yeah. You know? We come with that mindset of looking at Jesus um, as this genie. Yeah. Right? Um, you are you said like as as we as I shared in Matthew seven, right? Ask and you you shall receive. Sometimes we put it back to God's face and say, "You've written, told me that, yeah. you know." So I'm asking, but then obviously that's an immature way of seeing it. Absolutely, because the Bible does say that we need to pray according to the will of God. Yeah, and that's why you were mentioning sometimes God will grant you what you are asking for. Sometimes God will decline. And there are many reasons for that because maybe we are asking for the wrong things, right? Yeah. I can't ask for for harm to happen to someone else. That's that's not in God's will. Exactly, it's know? not His nature. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. that's we we need to be very careful. Yeah. What I like to do, and and this helped me in my prayer life, is don't see God as a genie. Look at Him as a Father. Absolutely. Now, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And the reason why is because when a father declines, he's not declining because he doesn't love his children. He's declining because, because, he, some, loves yeah, because he loves them. And he knows sometimes they're asking for things that can harm them. I've yes. got kids, and if I granted everything they asked me, um, they might have diabetes by now, right? Because there's always sugar, it's always lollies, and so on. It's not the best for them. No, it's not. And they don't know what's best yeah. for them. Yeah. So, to me, <clears throat> what I like to do, and, and I want to get your opinion on it, is I've changed my attitude to when God says no. Mm. In the sense of, I shouldn't be upset because God declined. I should be happy because God knows something that I don't better. know. better, yeah. Yeah, that that's how I'm seeing. That's it. an amazing perspective, and um, thank you for sharing that. I I think it's it's a very mature perspective. Unfortunately, not everyone is <laughs> to that point. Um, it took look, a while. It's it's very hard to not be displeased when the answer is no, uh, regardless of what you're asking for. But look, sometimes having that that heart, the, like a more um, malleable heart. Where like malleable for God, not for the world. Um, and it's let God shape it the way you want. It's it's something that you should pray for. 
and I assure you God will give that to you and because it's a struggle it's, it's been a struggle in my life as well where my heart has been a bit hard too hard with God's will and God wanted to shape it but for him to do that it would crush my heart you've got that wrestling inside yeah of you, yeah right? so uh, look I of everyone here I'm sure everyone would want to have their wishes granted like be a millionaire a billionaire whatever it is and you know never be ill have your loved ones healthy and, and look those are not some some of the things are not bad of you it's like i want my family to be healthy that's not a horrible thing to ask but unfortunately sometimes those cannot be answered for whatever reason and we don't know we don't know the reason sometimes sometimes god has to say either not now or no and it's very hard to hear that especially when it's something that's doesn't sound selfish to you mm-hmm. right and sometimes the answer is no even for things that are not selfish but there's a better reason for it yeah and like you know god could you make my parents or my children christian like mm-hmm. could, could they believe in jesus like i know it's coming out of a good heart yes. but knowing the nature and the character of god where he doesn't force himself upon anyone it's that decision is always up to that you, person yeah. then you start to recognize there is some you, you know it seems innocent as a prayer as a request it does yeah. you know and and you're like well i'm sure god wants people to be saved of course so why why wouldn't that be a problem but then we recognize that it's not part of god's character yeah so i think that's important as we even spoke about the first part which is reading the word of god is praying according to the word i think that is so important absolutely is having that mindset where you are aware of who god is and how he shares himself to be into saying okay i know the character of god mm. and i know the prayer that will please him yes i know the prayer that if I ask for these things and and it's not you know we're, we're not trying to be strategic kind of thing no. you know <laughs> you can't you can't ask my god but in in the sense of I know what god wants in my life yes. and I know what I can pray for yeah. I think that's important absolutely and um I think Jesus gives us a perfect example and I believe it's in Luke with the with the Pharisee and the tax collector oh yeah Luke 18 yeah Luke 18 um so when the the Pharisees are very prideful and he compares himself to other people and also to the tax collector and he says look I am not like these people look how great I am and and God did not like that prayer whereas the tax collector when he prayed he was a lot more humble and he had his head down and and all he did was glorify God and explain how bad of a person he is and how great God is and God loved that he loved his prayer because he was humble and he wants us to have that humble spirit where we like God let your will be done. Mm-hmm. It's not about what we want because we're imperfect and we recognize that and it's not just something you say from your mouth because I'm sure if the if the tax collector was saying that from his mouth and his heart says something else then God would recognize that. Mm-hmm. But the Pharisee's heart was proud and the tax collector's heart was humble and his words were too and their words both matched their heart yeah. and God saw through them. I read that to you. Um Luke 18:10 he's saying um two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed about himself like this, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, extortionists, unrighteous people, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Yeah. Um I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. The tax collector, however, stood far off and would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, "God be merciful to me, a sinner that I am." And this is Jesus after finishing that parable. He's saying, "I tell you that this man went down to his home justified rather than the tax collector, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled." but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. Yeah. As such a great example. And you know what it is? We might not be like this tax uh the Pharisee. Pharisee, but at times we can have that tinkle 
attitude in our prayer. It's in our heart. Yeah. yeah. Like, God, I've done so much. Why is this happening to me? Mm-hmm. So we're basically having that similar attitude of, um, you know, kind of showing our medals to God. Say, this is, these are my achievements. And this is what I've done. How come life is being unfair to me? And that's not a good attitude to come before no. God. Always come in humility and trusting God. Because even when life is falling apart, in God's hand, everything is good. Everything is safe. Yeah. And what that reminds me, it reminds me when Jesus was walking in the water. And Peter looked at him. Yeah. It's like, Jesus, if that's you, I want to come. I want to come where you are. And Jesus granted him to come. To come, yeah. And we always read that story and think about faith, right? Mm. It's the faith. And then when he looks at the wave, he falls, right? Mm. But what interests me is the question is, why did Peter <coughs> want to be with Jesus on the water rather than on the boat? Because often in life, the boat doesn't require any faith, right? It's solid. It's something that you can stand on and you can hold to. And there's a lot of things in life that we like to be safe. We like to be comfortable. But then to be where Jesus is, it requires faith. But I think Peter found it to be more safe on the water with Jesus than on that boat. Mm. And sadly, sometimes, which is why maybe one of the reasons we neglect to pray, is sometimes we might think it's more safe if I do this than trust in God. Like example, um, I work a lot of hours. So therefore, um, I have to do that, but then I'll have to neglect my prayer. But I have to feed my family. In thinking that way, I'm putting the provision, even though I am responsible for it, right? Biblically, you have to to work and feed your family. But ultimately, I'm putting that responsibility upon myself rather than what Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Mm. Give us our daily bread, right? Trusting that ultimately it is in God's hand. You know, whatever I have now, it could all fall apart. Yeah. But if I give everything to Jesus and I say, Lord, in prayer, I submit this to you. It is in your hand. I trust in you. Then I believe we will start to put more emphasis into our prayer life yeah absolutely absolutely um yeah i think it's very important that we recognize that sometimes god calls us to prayer by the things that happen in our lives Mm. so and because we are lacking in that because of our day-to-day things because we concentrate on our family situation or um you know how our finances are doing So we sometimes ignore our prayer because we're so busy with life and sometimes things go wrong. Even though we're so preoccupied with life, things still go wrong. And then we're forced to go back to prayer because we can't fix it. It gets to that point where you're you're frustrated and no matter what you do, sorry, Mm. it's not going to help. It's that simple lesson and yet we're so disobedient to it at times. Yeah. You know? Like... And, and this is why we were choosing devotion as one of our first topics is because it's something as a Christian, when you first come to know Jesus, yeah. it's right in front of your face. You're introduced to it straight away, right? Read your Bible, pray, worship, fast, and so on. Yeah. But then as as much, like as long as you walk with, with the Lord, whether it's in 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Like, the longer you walk with the Lord, that lesson, it's not something that you, you can outgrow. Mm-hmm. It always needs to be in your life. And yep. it's not something that you could say, which I see a lot of times, is I used to pray. I used to read my Bible. I used to do this. It's not something that is, I guess, a season in your life or a phase. It's something that needs to happen in your daily life yeah. until you meet the Lord. Yeah, it's like 
it's like trying to build muscles in the gym and then once you get muscular you stop and you're like oh mm -hmm. and you expect them to stay there no no it's not it's not sustainable you know if you just stop it's something you have to continuously do and to see results and once you see results you gotta still maintain it it's not gonna magically stay there forever no you have to keep going at it and and we have to stop looking at prayer as something we do just when we need it um it's supposed to be something that's like an honor it, and it is an honor to be in the presence of god and we have to treat it as such it's not some it's not a hassle it's not a it's not a chore it's an honor the king is granting you permission to be in his presence just picture that imagine your idol whoever it may be your and you know your, your your hero whoever that is an actor an actress a, a saint whatever it is a king a queen a monarch allowing you to meet them wouldn't you be happy whether it's a soccer player whatever it is imagine that person your hero person you look up to allowing you to meet them in person right wouldn't you be happy imagine but now you got someone that's even greater your creator the one that's above all things above everyone above all creation above everything right and he is allowing you into his presence how much more should you be you should be ecstatic and you can and it's as simple as praying you're in his presence you're in the presence of the lord he is listening to you he's not just he's not just there and he heard you no he's actively listening to what you say and he will answer you one way or another and I think it's important that we first recognize who we're praying to and the attitude that we have to have when we pray and the way we should perceive prayer. And then after that, we can then look at why sometimes our prayers go unanswered. Mm. And I think there's a few reasons for that. Oh, definitely there is. One thing before we move on, sure. Um, as you're talking about, like, it's not a chore, mm. it's a privilege and so on. One thing I also, even in my own life, I always have to remind myself that just just like a friend, I use that as an example. Mm. If every time I meet that friend, and if it's always a request, it's always I want something out of that friend, how do you think that friend will, how would he feel about me, right? Yeah. He would think that, uh-oh, Martin is just here, and he must be asking for something. Right, he needs yeah. something because all he sees is just a person to you. Mm. And sometimes when we come to God, it's like, God, could you bless my family? Could you help me out in ministry? Could you help me out at work? Um, could you forgive my sins? And and the list goes on. But we never have an actual conversation with God. We never spend time to glorify God. Mm. You know, we never meditate on what God has done in the past yeah. and what he's promised in the future. It's just about, God, I'm here. This is my life. This is how busy I am. Could you take care of these areas in my life? Yeah. And I'll get to see you tomorrow. You know? And it, it's a scary thought, but we do need to remind ourselves. And I think the way even Jesus structured the Lord's Prayer, first half it's about god and his kingdom yes the second half that's when it gets to our needs yes so he's actually teaching his disciples when they come to god and approach god is focus on god first absolutely and then look at yourself yeah glorify yeah. god give him his honor yeah. and then once that's done if there's time ask <laughs> for what you need to ask you know what it is sorry to cut you off sure but um i've i've noticed and i even use amos as an example in the mm. bible where um if you are focused on on glorifying god and serving others sometimes we don't even need to ask god no. and just god provides for the things that we need absolutely and and jesus says it he says when you seek the kingdom of god you know put that first everything else is provided for you yeah 
sometimes we think when we come in prayer is God let me tell you what I need and then I'll focus on you yeah but in the Bible it's the opposite focus on God focus on his kingdom and God will provide for the things for your needs yeah absolutely I mean uh, just put yourself in a position where you you as a human being imagine I come to you say to you hey my friend how are you today and lovely to see you i spend time with you and i talk to you and you can notice that you know we go out to eat i don't buy any food oh yeah fine thank you and you notice that it sounds like this person is hungry but they don't have money wouldn't you offer like hey my friend would you like some food right Mm -hmm. and that's you as a human being you recognize maybe he doesn't have the money for food maybe maybe there's something going on and that's just me spending i haven't asked you for anything but you as a brother see that how much more would he who knows my heart who knows my whole situation he knows every i just want to spend time with my father right yeah he notices your needs hmm. i think that's important I'll, I'll use that next time when i go <laughs> <laughs> when i go for dinner oh guys i'm i'm not really hungry but, <laughs> but if you want to share me it's, it's all right yeah just kidding <laughs> um the other point i wanted to talk about hmm. is recognizing the difference between repetition mm. and persistence yeah, yeah, yeah. right because often people will look at matthew 6 mm. right and jesus speaks about in matthew 6 we shouldn't be repeating right and obviously there is a there is a context to it. I'll, I'll bring it out i believe he compares them to pagans right he does compare them to pagans yeah i, I should have had it because i i was at luke 18 in the beginning but um i'll go um where we go ah here we go in in verse um verse seven yes verse seven yeah um sorry i just gotta get it ready he's saying when you pray do not babble uh sorry do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do for they, for they think that they will be heard for their many prayers. And I often get people, they're like, I've prayed about this. Should I continue to pray about this? Mm. Because Jesus is saying, don't repeat. So wh- what do you think about that? I think those are two different things. Being pers- Having perseverance and being repetitive are two different things. Um, for example, if you're just saying the same prayer and over again, just for the sake of saying that prayer, just to show how good of a person you are, I think you have the wrong attitude and the wrong spirit. Uh, if you're continuously asking God to help one person to come to Christianity because you love that person, and even though you're not seeing results, you continuously pray, that's not repetition. That's being pers- that's having perseverance because you love that person. I think those are two separate things, and I think two extreme examples, but still, I think they're relevant to help people understand the differences between repetition and perseverance. Yeah, and and perseverance, obviously, you could look at Luke 18, right at the beginning, mm-hmm. where Jesus takes the parable of the widow yes. and, and that evil judge, Yes, right? Yes. And he's using that as an example because she, she was that persistent, yeah. right? In the sense where that evil judge, even though he doesn't care about the justice, basically, he still grant her her wishes and when you look at that you see like it's an extreme example absolutely because often when jesus uses parables he always parallels yeah who god is who man is yes but here he's using a sinner as a widow and he's using a holy righteous glorious god as you know in the place of an evil judge but he's not an evil judge by any means but he's just showing the comparison if this widow was able to get justice from this evil judge how much more are we able to get our prayers heard and receive our own uh, justice from a righteous judge from a good glorious judge i believe that's important yeah it is because the widow and us we, we, we're known as the bride of christ yeah we are she's a widow her husband's dead True. uh we coming before 
someone that's calling us his bride. And so we're not just coming before any judge. It's someone that's, he's, he's, we're his, right? We're not just some random person. And we're coming before that judge and we're saying, please, will you grant us this? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, I'll, we'll end it with this. Mm. Um, I really like um, this verse. And, and this is something I believe is very important for us, especially in today's age. Um, this is what First Peter 4, 7 says. The end of everything is near. Therefore, practice self-control and keep your minds clear so that you can pray. Okay. I just encourage you guys that by having a busy mind, by occupying your mind with other things in life, that often at times you don't find yourself the time or having the strength to pray. to pray. I just encourage you, as Peter does, that the end is near. Mm-hmm. And we don't know when Jesus is going to come back. But even if it's not in our lifetime, we can still devote ourselves in prayer. Amen. Yeah. So God bless you guys, and we'll see you for the next time. I think I believe... Our next part is worship. Worship, correct. Yeah, we'll see you then. God bless you. God bless you. Bye.